Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the WenUp family handhelds in 2021. Are they still worth picking up or is it just a completely waste of money? That is what we're going to find out. So stay tuned, consider subscribing, hit the bell, become one of the Wicked family. But first, let's do the famous intro that we're always doing with videos like these. Because it's time for... War! It's a time for a package from China. Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. So, we're going to take a close look at the 1UP Game Boy lookalike version. To be honest, I have no idea otherwise how I need to call this thing. I also did a review about the Nemesis. That thing was freaking horrible. Maybe we'll take a close look at it later. But then overall, what are we going to get? So from this company called Kin Hank, and there are some other versions out there, selling these 1UP, let's say, I want to say DIY. There are DIY kits, but they are like pre-assembled and for you just ready to go. So what are we going to get in the box? To be honest, not a lot. We're going to get the handle itself, a cable for charging it. If you're lucky, you're going to get an HDMI cable for the signal output because you can use this thing like in game console. So that is pretty cool. It's more like a 201 system, similar like the Nintendo Switch. But how good is it actually in 2021? Is this thing worth picking up? Because they are still selling it with a Raspberry Pi 3 inside and the competition had been moved on to the Raspberry Pi 4. There were some downsides to this device, so let's take a close look at it. Okay, we're having an analog stick and the analog stick itself is pretty good. The D-pad is not a D-pad, like four separate buttons. No idea why they are have chosen for this option. The analog stick is similar to, let's say, a PS Vita, only a cheaper one. And I mean with, that there's not that great of a grip on it. Select start over here and we're going to get the six button layout, what I personally really prefer because I'm a big fan of fighting games. So the display itself is a 3.5 inch, it comes also with two speakers, but the stereo speakers are pretty damn horrible. We can still reach the CF card if you need to remove it or you want to reflash it, that is no problem whatsoever. There are a lot of switches on this device, one of them as example if you want to have like a higher speed for the fan itself, that sounds like a freaking vacuum cleaner. At the top of the system, we're going to get the audio out, HDMI out, the Type-C for charging, volume control and the on and off switch. We can still reach the port, only one has been used for the USB port over there. You can see like there are only three are left for adding a controller and of course an Ethernet connection if you want to hook it up to your network. So and overall like there are a lot of capabilities when it comes to hooking it up and using it like a mini game console. Okay, over here we're going to get a battery indication for LEDs. At the back we're going to get four shoulder buttons, so we have enough buttons for most games to play. I didn't like the position again because the system itself is quite bulky and getting your hands around it and trying to push the button is just a freaking nightmare. And overall it's a very nice system to see, it's translucent so you can see all the internal parts. And I can tell you like they used a lot of parts in this machine. They need a lot of soldering, but let's take a close look at the menu itself. So when the one-up handhelds were released back in the day, they were quite fascinating and we could play a lot of stuff that we couldn't play with the handhelds that we had like the crappy ones. But the problem is now like we're having so many options. So even now in 2021, in my opinion, it's quite obsolete because with the Amy Alec and the Ambinic handhelds, there are so many better options out there and we're having way better performance sometimes. If they slap a Pi 4 in this machine, that will be like more a game changer in my opinion. But still, what I think is so cool about the Pi, you can play a lot of systems that you couldn't play before on many of these Chinese handhelds. But I just want to give you a heads up, like be aware of that there are a lot of devices out there. Maybe you didn't even see them both because you don't see them very often. The left one, I think I reviewed it from IO Gaming Store, like had a bigger battery and had some weird thing going on, like there were no shoulder buttons with the left one. But in overall, like there are a lot of different options out there when it comes to acrylic and translucent handhelds. Both are running on the Raspberry Pi 3 and still now even in 2021, they sell it like this. Where comes the difference is what I do like about the IO gaming version or the fake one or the non i one up version is that we're going to get a pretty cool good work D pad that we didn't have with the one up. So you can see like so many differences between all of these handhelds. But still the one up, ugh, why did they mess it up with the D pad? 
So you have a chance you want to play some MAME games. There are so many freaking ways nowadays to play. And maybe in the future we'll make like a top 10 ways to play MAME games. Because we have a way better and cheaper solutions. If you use the analog stick in combination with the buttons, they will work just fine. I must say I really enjoyed playing this game. And it works very well. The D-pad on the other hand of course is just a freaking nightmare with the four separate buttons. The emulation of MAME, Neo Geo and all the low end stuff run just fine. And I do like this display that they're using inside this machine. It's a beautiful IPS display and it looks amazing. It has a 60 FPS refresh rate. So we're going to get the best result when it comes to the emulation and having some gameplay fun. So for finding games, I like the button layout, but I am forced to use the analog stick. It is possible to play actually like Street Fighter with the four buttons, but then overall like I was not the biggest fan of it, so I keep playing with the analog stick. But if you're searching for a handheld that play basically everything, then I think the 1UP are still a very cool thing to have. Because with thanks to the Pi, we can do so many great things, and if they slap a Pi 4 in this machine, it's going to be one mean machine. But with the Pi 3 and the 3B Plus, if you're going to pick one up, you can still play all the low-end stuff like 8-bit, 16-bit stuff without any problem. But there are so many different solutions out there that are way better when it comes to compatibility, comfort and, let's say, better displays. So in overall, like, the Pi is great, but I think like if they slapped a Pi 4 in this machine, you could play some high-end games. That would make this thing really special and stand out beside all of the competition that is out there. But if you're thinking buying a handheld for playing PlayStation 1, there are so many options. And I think even the 1UP plays them perfectly. This is not a great way because of the controls. I personally prefer to play with the D-pad too. And this is just not a good experience. And there are so many good options out there nowadays. But when it comes to the high-end stuff, N64, Dreamcast, PlayStation Portable, we need a Pi 4 at least for this. The fun fact is like when you're looking at a lot of these Chinese handhelds, there are almost none of them have the option to have a TV out function. Or they have a TV function and it doesn't even work or you need to configure it and mess around with it. And with the Pi version, the mine version I got here that had like the plug and play solution. Sometimes I need to reboot one of these one up systems to get the signal working. But I think it's pretty cool if you want to play some games and you're thinking, hey, I want to have this handheld, I can plug into my television. That is why I like about the Pi's. It's super good, it's super play easy to use, it's just a really easy plug and play solution. But if you have any questions, you can also leave it in the comments. I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing and hit that little bell, become one of the Wicked family, it would be cool to have you here. And I will help you out finding the right products for you because it's in jungle out there when it comes to the handhelds because oh man, there are so many of these freaking things. And also it will be great to see you in the next video.